Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar and we're still waiting for some of the attendees to join us online today. So bear with us and we will start in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on uh, how to promote your involvement uh, in the European Vocational Skills Week 2019 through the social media. My name is David Liberati, and I'm a senior uh, communication consultant here at Acoris. I am responsible for uh, the digital aspects of the campaign, and I'm uh, delighted to be your presenter today. We have lots of interesting tips uh, and tricks for you to make the most out of social media. But before we get started uh, with all the interesting content, I need to uh, go over a few technical details to make sure that your webinar experience is as smooth as possible. Um, you should see the attendee interface on your own computer desktop, and you should be listening in using uh, your computer's speaker system. On the left, you have the GoToWebinar viewer, so this is where you can see the presentation. On the right, there is the GoToWebinar control panel where uh, you can submit questions simply by uh, typing them into the questions uh, box. Um, please use this box either, uh, for both uh, your questions regarding any of the uh, concept in the presentation, as well as if you have any technical issues or any problems, for example, uh, with the audio. Um, there will be also obviously time for questions at the end of the webinar, so don't be shy and share your any questions or doubts, any curiosity you may have, so that we'll uh, be able to uh, answer them and those will be useful for all the participants here today. So now let's get down to business. Let me give you first a quick overview of today's agenda and what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna start with some information about this webinar and about the uh, European Vocational Skills Week campaign. Then we will look at all the ways in which you can get, um, you can take part in the Skills Week and especially as some tips and tricks on how to promote your event successfully on social media. Then we will look at how to make sure that your content delivers the best results for you and how to effectively engage with others on different social channels. And finally, we will have a short uh, question and answer session that will allow you to ask anything that may come to your mind. Since we we'll like to keep this as interactive as possible, um, we will have some poll questions uh, coming up throughout the presentation and to, to simply get some more information uh, uh, from you or hear your opinions on some particular topics. Having said that, uh, well, let's start. 
As you already know, the European Vocational Skills Week is an initiative from the European Commission um, to raise the attractiveness of vocational education and training, uh, which we'll call VET from now on. Um, the aim of the week is to make VET more of, a, more of an appealing proposition uh, and to present it as a valuable first choice, something that can help both young and older learners to achieve their potential. The European Vocational Skills Week is open to all organizations promoting VET in any of the EU member states, uh, the candidate countries to the EU and the um, EFTA, European Free Trade Association countries. Um, this is uh, now going to be the fourth edition of the week and the official week this year takes place in Helsinki, Finland uh, from the 14 until the 18 of October 2019. There are a lot of events and activities uh, which uh, are being organized all across Europe uh, from April until December. And we have now uh, just reached uh, 500 events uh, and more are joining us every day. So there are, there are a lot of ways. Oh, sorry. Why is it beneficial for you to get involved using social media? Well, here you can see some numbers from last year edition. As you can see, being part of a European Vocational Skills Week campaign can give you and your event a huge amount of visibility offline, but especially online. Um, it's really a great opportunity for you to amplify your own message, showcase your great work on vocational education, and in general, engage with a, a range of different digital audiences. There are a lot of ways in which you can take part today uh, uh, European uh, uh, Vocational Skills Week through social, but the most um, the key ways are by uh, either sharing the campaign materials, uh, following the campaign's platform and sharing content by using the relevant hashtags, and also uh, finally talk about the campaign at the events. So one of the easiest ways is to live tweet, for example, and use the uh, hashtag at the same time. But who are your fellow VET promoters uh, or followers? Well, there are a lot of different organizations who are eligible to take part. For example, there are vocational learners, teachers and trainers, career counselors and researchers, but also, for example, um, um, small and medium-sized enterprises, parents association or um, learning organization. So there are really, really a lot of different actors that can get, that can um, be engaged and involved into the campaign. So this year's theme is Vet for All, Skills for Life. And you may you may say, okay, what does it mean? Well, it means that Vet is for everyone and is widely accessible. Um, it's really a great option for people of all ages. Um, uh, moreover, it can provide you with skills that can help young learners to get in, onto their career path, as well as more experienced workers. The main motto of the campaign is discover your talent. So this means that basically everybody, every single person is, tal is talented and uh, that can help nurture those talents uh, in order to uh, fulfill um, everyone's potential. And also, uh, there is an element of learning through life, uh, so which uh, um, highlights the lifelong learning uh, uh, and uh, the benefits that that brings to the society. There are two main hashtags for the campaign, and those are to be used for uh, slightly different purposes. So EU vocational skills is to be used for uh, content which is aimed at stakeholders and multipliers or influencers, for example, it can be a, a, an, an employment organization in your country, while Discover Your Talent is more adapted for a broader audience, let's say the general public. It's important that you can use them in the right way to effectively uh, engage with your audiences. So now we would like to give control over to you for the first poll question. And you know we're really curious to know about what social media channels do you use the most, and we'll give you a couple of moments just to collect the answers, and then we'll look together at the results. So now you should be able to see the poll open on your screen. And uh, yeah, so let's see. I will give you a few moments to collect your results. And then we're going to look together. 
what is your main what are your main social channels if you have any if you make a, a big use of uh, uh, a social media platform which is not included in the list please uh, um, select e other and uh, type in the box what do you use we're really curious to know so i'll give an, let's say another five seconds to uh, cast your vote and then we'll close the poll Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Okay, so now you should be able to see uh, the results of the poll on your screen. Um, so yeah, vast majority, so we have an ex equo, vast majority of the people you, uh, uses Facebook and Twitter as primary social channels, uh, followed by 43% uh, utilizing Instagram and uh, LinkedIn with 14%. So yeah, Facebook and Twitter are, are obviously the most um, the most well known and the most utilized channels, and they should be used, however, for different uh, in different ways. And for example, Twitter is a very very good channel for promotion of video content, whilst Facebook is very good in terms of this audience segmentation. It really allows you to uh, reach and engage with a lot of different audiences uh, in its targeting criteria. Okay, so having said that, let's go on and come back to the presentation. And the next one is about, so the five best ways to engage with the week through social media are, uh, first of all, following us on our channels, sharing the campaign materials, creating your own content, uh, making use, so give prominence to visual content and uh, utilizing live streaming uh, video functions. Since these are all very important aspects, so we're going to examine them one by one. So to ensure that it can effectively reach out its, its uh, many audiences and present the benefits of that, the European Vocational Skills Week campaign is active on multiple social channels this year. Most of the activity will happen on Facebook and Twitter, um, on the Social Europe and European Youth accounts. On, um, um, however, some topics will, uh, will be also be promoting the week through the main European Commission accounts on LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, so for this reason, please follow us on uh, as many channels as you can to make sure that you don't miss out uh, anything, uh, anything important and uh, Having said that, let's pass over to the next one. So as said, uh, the team developed a wide range of great resources in all EU official languages to help and support you at every step of the way. Uh, you can download them from the link that you see on the page um, that will be sent over to you with, together with a hands out. But it's not just resources. There are lots of videos, infographics, articles uh, released every single day that explore different aspects of that. For example, um, famous women uh, in, uh, in uh, vocational or uh, uh, the journey of, from an apprentice to an entrepreneur, to a business owner. So uh, we re really encourage you to take a look at the news item and choose whatever is closer to you, to your heart, but especially to your audience. Uh, there are really, really plenty of, um, of um, interesting content pieces that you can uh, share. Uh, so on this, I selected three quick, very easy to um, easy and ready to share uh, top materials for you. First one is the uh, campaign launch video, the promotional video of the campaign. Uh, the second one is an article on uh, famous women in uh, in bed, and the third one is the success story of the month. So every month we collect all the uh, all the stories from our. Uh, for our public and we um, uh, give an award to one of them as a, as a uh, story of the month, let's say. We highlight one of them as story of the month. So this leads us to our uh, second uh, poll question and we really like to know what kind of content do you create or you share the most on your uh, social media channels? You should be able to 
see the question on your screen. So yeah, do you make, uh, do you use mostly uh, text only posts? Uh, do you use videos or you already use live streaming videos? Uh, do you use GIFs or memes to uh, give a more of a humoristic uh, tone to your, to your communications? Or do you go more in depth through uh, the use of um, digital uh, you know, ebooks or guides? And finally, there are uh, infographics, uh, there are data visualization, visualization type of content, like, such as infographics or checklists. Obviously, you can select up to three answers. So if you use more than one, uh, feel free to uh, take more than one box. And as usual, we'll wait a few moments to allow everybody to um, answer the question, and then we'll uh, close the poll and look at the results together. Okay, so five more seconds and then we'll, uh, we'll close the poll. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Okay, all of you, the, the totality of the audience uh, uses text-only posts, which is a great way to, obviously, if you need to vehicle a um, high amount of information or very, for example, very specific information, very technical, you need to, uh, uh, to use a textual post. And then we have 67% um, utilizing videos or live videos, 50% uh, so half of the audience is, is using, making use of infographics and checklists, 17% GIFs. Nobody is at the moment using or promoting guides and ebooks on their channel. So uh, it's a very interesting result. And from uh, um, my point of view, uh, the, the best, the uh, obviously each, each type of content has its own pros and cons. Uh, what I would recommend in terms of um, getting involved in the European Vocational Skills Week campaign is to make a great prominence to videos and live videos. Uh, GIFs are very popular with younger audience, so if your audience are young learners or students, this is definitely a great, uh, a great type of content to use. And also infographics and checklists are very, very popular on um, uh, social networks such as LinkedIn. Uh, you know, business-based uh, social network in which you need to vehicle more uh, professional information or specific data about a specific sector or industry or topic. Uh, this is because the attention span of LinkedIn user is much higher than the average attention span of a Facebook or Twitter user. So they have the time and willingness to go through that information or content. So let's now go on to the next slide. So here you can find some ready-made social media posts that we prepare for you, and you can uh, you can use and uh, in your own in your own channels. All you need to do is uh, you know copy and paste them, and obviously inserting um, customize them with your own uh, event name or your country. Uh, but we wanted to give you really really everything that you you may need. Uh, to start promoting uh, your your work as part of the skills week uh, with the minimum effort so you are ready ready to go as you can see the topics of the sample posts are, are slightly different some of them are in general on vocational skills week some of them are more about uh, success stories uh, some of them may be as a, about the awards for the uh, bad excellence which are coming up very soon so if you have nominated someone for this year's award, remember to, um, uh, to, vote, uh, to vote them. Uh, the voting will be opening on the 15th of September. So uh, create your own content is really uh, another great way of engaging with your audiences. And this is because the content is unique, is going to be tailored to yourself and to your organization. Uh, your, uh, creating your own content is a, a very effective way to promote your own contribution, um, but also to raise awareness of the week and reach out to a different stakeholders group. 
uh, remember to use the official hashtag consistently uh, with both your written but also visual content so you can easily uh, embed those if you're using any visuals any images um, and also uh, remember to add emojis filters and live pictures from relevant events uh, uh, and also remember to tag other relevant accounts in your post by using the uh, at and then typing the account name and this ensures that they see that your content uh, and this will encourage them to interact with it uh, and brings uh, and brings it to the attention of their own audience so is uh, uh, tagging is also a very important thing to to remember so visuals are a key component of your content strategy and are perhaps the best performing type of content in social and this is because video is easy to consume and to share uh, images, videos, and GIFs uh, can uh, improve the effectiveness of your content by making your audience more likely to receive your message. Uh, and in making your content more noticeable, you, uh, they can also improve the likelihood of your audience interacting with your posts or responding to any, any call to action, such as click here or register, etc. Uh, GIFs are particularly popular at the moment and appeal as a short attention-grabbing animation. Um, they usually automatically place on people's feed. There are a number of simple online tools that you can use to create GIFs. So, uh, we put some of them here, such as Giphy, Tenor, uh, EZ GIF. Um, but uh, alternatively, you can use uh, pre-made uh, GIFs. However, most social media channels, such as Facebook and Twitter, have uh, built-in GIFs uh, search options. Or, or you can find um, GIFs to share or download from Google Images. Uh, posting film footage from events is also a great way of promoting your uh, event, uh, the week in general, and that. And um, it's also you know, a welcome change from the usual static images. Um, you can use your, your own smartphone to record footage and upload it on your uh, social media channel of choice. Um, however, a couple of caveats to bear in mind if you decide to use your own mobile uh, phone to uh, capture uh, footage from event. First of all, always remember to keep your content appropriate to the setting and ask for consent to any person which may appear in your photos or videos before you start to film. Um, so remember, always ask for consent. And um, there are also a few tips on how to uh, film at best from your smartphone. Um, for example, remember to keep the orientation of your phone as a landscape, so not portrait, but landscape, and uh, ensure that the light is uh, enough and is not casting shadows, for example, on your face or on the subject's face. Uh, and also, the focus should be always be on the main subject and be careful because on some smartphones there can be an autofocus feature which may shift. The, the, the focus on another another subject. Uh, so uh, make sure that the focus is always on the main subject. Um, assure you've got the right settings on. For example, if the event is, a, is a, uh, in the evening, you've got the night mode switched on. Uh, and also uh, try to keep your camera as steady as possible. Um, you can also use a tripod if you want. It's a good, uh, uh, that's a good aid uh, to keep your image steady. So in the age of instant content, things like Snapchat, Instagram Stories, Facebook Live are really effective ways of reaching core audiences. Um, by integrating Facebook and Instagram Live into your content strategy, this will provide you with a unique real-time source of content. Live videos are so popular at the moment because they are perceived as more authentic, unedited and unfiltered. Um, so they give uh, the, the viewer that feeling of uh, behind the scene let's say. So uh, we, re we really recommend you as advice number one that you plan out your live content as you would do with anything else in your content strategy to maximize, uh, maximize its effectiveness. So here we have uh, three, uh, we collected three best three tips for each platform uh, for what regards live, live videos. If you're using Facebook Live, first of all, let people know you're broadcasting ahead of time so they know to look out for your video. Uh, remember to encourage the viewers to like and share the video uh, during, the, during the live. And, and also, respond to, 
uh, respond to comments uh, or reactions live. So use the audience members' name, names to keep them engaged. So it's a two-way communication. They can interact with you in real time and you can respond to them in the same way. Uh, if you're using Instagram stories, uh, there is a very, very um, useful uh, built-in portrait mode, which ensure uh, a sharp focus on the subject. Um, there are also a lot of interactive stickers uh, that Instagram um, uh, gives you, such as uh, these. You can use these to create polls, uh, emoji sliders, and also um, recently released question stickers uh, that you can use to get a response from your followers. And once you've finished your story, remember to share your story highlights with relevant contacts by direct message. This is a great tip because it allows you to increase, let's say, the, the shelf life of your story uh, more uh, uh, after, even after finishing it. Finally, there is uh, you can uh, live stream on uh, Twitter thanks to an app called Periscope. So if you're using Twitter Periscope, uh, remember to first of all draft your broadcast title carefully so to choose uh, an appealing title and make use of emojis to make it stand out take some time to uh, welcome the people uh, as they join the uh, the live before you start as you know you know not all of the attendees may uh, be online straight away so take some time to welcome them and uh, uh, let's say break the ice and finally, ask you, remember to ask your audience to share the scope with their followers. So this will allow you to multiply your reach, uh, the reach of your of your live video. So these are just three quick tips. Obviously, there are many more, but uh, uh, other ones that we will recommend uh, if you're using one or the other of the platforms for your live streaming. So how to make the most out of your content? How to make sure that your content goes the extra mile? Uh, for you. So first of all, remember to include the link to the European Vocational Skills Wave page, and this will allow, will allow your audience to uh, get more information on any of the aspects of the campaign. Uh, remember to tag, to tag other relevant Twitter accounts in the post. So we, as we explained, this is very important because we we'll allow them to uh, see and engage and interact with your content. Include a clear call to action. So remember to um, include um, in your post whatever action you want your audience to uh, to undertake whether they want you you want them to uh, uh, watch a video register to your event or to share your content with your network so remember to include a clear call to action uh, you can also pin the tweets to the top of your feed to ensure uh, ongoing visibility this is particularly useful for welcome messages uh, remember to reply and interact with other content utilizing the uh, uh, always utilizing the hashtags discover your talent or uh, EU vocational skills. Uh, responding to comments or replies within 24 hours is usually a best practice because it shows that you are uh, present on the platform, you're active, and you're able to um, cope with any question or any, any query very, uh, very quickly. So uh, remember to, be, um, to respond to comments or replies to your comment within 24 hours. Um, there are a lot of uh, automated uh, scheduling tools to plan uh, that you can use to plan your social content in advance. Uh, Hootsuite is uh, maybe the most famous one, but there are also others, for example, TweetDeck for Twitter and Buffer. Um, there are many more, but uh, these are really, really useful if you manage more than one social media channel in order to plan and schedule your content accordingly. Uh, and having a, a great overview of what's going on on each channel. And finally, hosting live activities, live videos on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. It can be, a, for example, a live Q&A with an industry expert, or it can be um, a story, so anything that can be uh, uh, streamed on live. Here you can see a couple of examples of what I was talking about. So on the left, uh, there is the uh, Hootsuite dashboard. As you can see, uh, there are uh, different columns. Uh, for example, for Twitter, there is one for home, the one for mentions, and there is uh, one on the left, which uh, shows all the scheduled um, uh, Instagram posts. Uh, so this is just to give you an example of how it would look like. And on the right, uh, this is actually taken from our own uh, uh, European Vocational Skills Week Facebook group. And uh, this is a welcome post uh, there is on the group, which we pinned on top of the page to make sure that uh, every newcomer 
uh, will uh, have the basic information on how the group works and what kind of um, you know content or support they can expect to receive from the group. So these are a couple of examples just to help you uh, understand what we're talking about. So uh, obviously, what we now that you got your content, you know how to uh, how to promote it. Shadowly is important to look at engagement. What we really want to uh, uh, do is elicit engagement in your audience, in the either in the form of likes, reactions, shares, retweets, or comments. And the best tips that we would like to give you uh, in order to maximize your engagement is, first of all, always tag where applicable. Remember to tag also if there are relevant influencers or uh, stakeholders. Tag them wherever, wherever you can. Uh, make use of relevant hashtags, um, including the two hashtags of the campaign. Discover your talent and EU vocational skills. Respond promptly, promptly to questions. And, uh, remember to comment, and share, or retweet content from your community as well. So that shows that there is a bi-directional is a, a dialogue and conversation. And finally, make the best use of the um, functionalities like such as polls and uh, surveys to uh, start a discussion and get some insights from your community. Um, engagement is really, really important because it will not only increase awareness of your organization or your work, um, but for example, could be if you are an employer, uh, you can increase the number of applications, let's say for any job vacancy you may have, or uh, um, if you are a training provider, it may um, help maximizing the uh, attendees to a training course you are offering. So is, engagement is really key when it comes to return on investment on social media. Obviously, there are some uh, common mistakes that most people make, and what we'd like to do is to uh, present you with some of the most common pitfalls uh, to avoid and how to avoid them. Uh, first of all, um, avoid copy-pasting your content across different channels. Every social media platform has got different functionalities and uh, different features. For this reason, for example, Twitter is very good for short, snappier posts and for video promotion. Well. Uh, LinkedIn is better suited for uh, more technical and longer content, especially text content. So don't copy paste it uh, across different channels, but always ad adapt your message or adapt your tone and style to the, uh, to the uh, channel you're using. Uh, remember to be consistent with your message across uh, the uh, different channels to avoid generating confusion in your audience. Um, Another common mistake is to adopt a one-way communication style. So remember, not just don't just stop, but also remember to listen carefully to your audience and uh, check what are the uh, comments or reactions coming to your to your content. This will be very helpful for you to inform uh, the uh, future creation of, of future content and help you get the best engagement. Um, and finally, uh, remember always remember to pay attention to your audience reactions and uh, for the reason that I said before. So this leads us to the last, last but not least, uh, question of the day of the webinar. Um, and we would like to know from you uh, whether do you use live stream videos in your channel? So uh, as we say, live stream uh, videos are uh, a very, um, a very important type of content which is now becoming very very used very very popular we, we would really like to know from you whether this is something that you regularly use um, in your channels or maybe you sometimes you may use them or maybe you're not using them because you don't know exactly where to start from but you would like to use them more in the future or maybe you don't you're not using them at the moment but and you know you don't intend to use them uh, more in the future. So I'll give you a few moments to uh, cast your answer and then I'll uh, close the poll and we will look together at, at the results. Okay, so a few more seconds and then we'll close the poll.
Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Um, so 80% of you at the moment are not using uh, live stream videos on their channels, but I will, they would like to uh, use them more in the future. Well, 20% uh, of the audience is making uh, use of them sometimes. So um, as a, this is very interesting because um, is uh, live stream videos is something that, as I said, is uh, really, really good and resonates very well with some audience types. Um, we gave you in this webinar some tips on how to get started on them. So my, my advice will be, uh, even if you're not 100% sure how all the different ways you can use them, uh, start, start simple and uh, uh, plan out some of your content for, uh, for your uh, channels to be dedicated exclusively to live stream. Uh, maybe you can also invite a guest and have a chat and uh, you know, start with simple, simple things. You don't need to do to overcomplicate it. Um, obviously, if you want any more uh, tips and advice, uh, uh, feel free to contact us at our, uh, on our channels, on our email, but my suggestion will be uh, to uh, start, you know, start creating some content and, you know, get started, let's say. And Okay, so having said that, I think that we are now, we're now came to the, uh, to the Q&A session where we leave the, uh, the stage over to you. And uh, we are going to answer any of the questions that came out, all of the questions that came out through the, through the uh, presentation. So first question is from Michael, Michael Miller. Uh, Michael is asking, what differences in content should be posted across each social media channel? Do you have any recommendations in different types of content or tone or content to use? Yes, so in terms of the uh, content, uh, my recommendation will be more general content. Uh, uh, more general content uh, is generally good for Facebook and Twitter. Twitter is particularly good for video promotion. Um, while uh, Instagram is, uh, as you know, is the number one site for, uh, for uh, photos. So in terms of visual content, uh, absolutely Instagram is something very good that resonates very well with younger audiences. Uh, so let's say under 30. Uh, while um, with regards to um, different uh, tone, um, I would say obviously the tone depends on your audience. If your audience is composed by uh, employers or association, uh, um, obviously you will need to uh, uh, adopt a more formal tone. And this is particularly uh, true on the, if you are uh, reaching them on LinkedIn, while on social media, uh, such as for example, uh, Twitter or Facebook, you can adopt a little bit a more informal tone. I would say, Michael, the, uh, you should always look at your audience. Uh, at, yeah, first of all, you should look at the objective. What's the objective of your communication? And second, uh, uh, make sure that con the, the tone uh, is appropriate to your, to your final audience. Then we got, yes, so we got Reynold from Denmark. So Reynold, or Reynold, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. So he's asking, what's the most effective channel to use to promote my upcoming event? Um, and this event is a career day aimed at encouraging people to take an apprenticeship. So we're looking at uh, young um, aspiring apprentices. And uh, so uh, I would really recommend in terms of the channel to go, uh, uh, well, since it's a career day, uh, I would uh, use a combination of uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter uh, since uh, we know that younger audiences are usually quite engaged on this on this channel. 
um, as usual, as always, remember to uh, adapt that content and message to your to your audience. Then I got another question. Uh, so this question is from uh, Nina in Croatia, and Nina is asking, how often should I post? Well, um, I would say the po the frequency of the post uh obviously depends on uh on the depends first of all on your on your content strategy so uh i would say no more than uh once a day to uh, a minimum of twice a week obviously depending on your on your uh, on your content uh if is uh, uh if your content is more uh is longer and more technical and detailed for example you're looking at uh uh, any an ebook or an article obviously uh, you're looking at about once a week while if the content is about uh, sharing uh, a short video or a photo you can have a daily or uh, a daily frequency or more than one day so um i would say the, the from two two times a day until you know once a week depending on what is your content about and also what is uh, if your t content has got different call to actions or different objectives obviously that also should be taken into account uh, then i got let me see another question okay so i got Alan from Germany is asking, Alan is asking, my organization is launching a new training course later this year, but our social media accounts don't have uh, many followers yet. How can I reach more people using social media? So, um, so this is, uh, Alan is a, has a very, very um, young account, let's say, just set up an account uh, and they still don't have many followers. Uh, my suggestion will be start uh, um, creating uh, and posting content regularly and start tagging relevant uh, um, uh, multipliers and stakeholders in your content. This will allow you to start building your, your audience and your network. You can also uh, combine them with some, for example, if you've got any budget, you can spend, you can start, uh, you can do some uh, uh, paid advertising campaigns, which will also help, which will also help you to reach new audiences and engage with them. Um, so my my suggestion, Alan, will be to combine uh, an organic growth, uh, an organic growth that you do through start posting and using relevant hashtags and tagging relevant people uh, with uh, maybe a little uh, paid campaign if you can, so that the 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 combined effect, the combined effect of the two. Uh, organic and paid will will allow you to uh, uh, to to build your audience uh, quite quickly. So uh, let's see if there is another question. So let's say there is a question from Costas uh, from Costas in Greece. Costas is asking if I am hosting a webinar, can I register it as a part of Skills Week? That's that's a nice one. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, it's a simple answer. So uh, there are obviously a lot of different types of events that you can, uh, um, or events or activities that you can register as part of the European Vocational Skills Week. And um, webinars is one of them. Um, also, if you are um, if you are um, hosting a training course or a conference, a career day, an open uh, uh, doors event. Also, um, an, an article on a magazine, those all counts. So uh, it doesn't matter the, the budget or um, the size of your event. Even if you're doing something small that is focused on that, that still you can still register it as part of the European Skills Week. If you want to have a list of uh, all the events, uh, the type of events that you can register as part of the campaign, uh, go on the resources uh, section of our website and uh, you can see there is a file called guidelines. There you can find some more information. Otherwise, uh, if you click on register your event on the homepage, 
uh, you will see um, a registration form and in this form there is a, a complete list of all the events uh, all the type of events uh, obviously some events can be a sort of a of a hybrid for example between a career day and an open doors event so you can select i think up to two options to make sure that uh, you describe your event in the most precise way as possible and we got another question as well uh, that is asking uh, should i post in english or in my native language okay that's a very interesting one um, i would say uh, again depends on your audience if you have an international audience uh, following your content in your channels then obviously yes uh, we recommend posting in english uh, to make sure that everybody is able to uh, to, to, to understand uh, your and interact with your content. If your focus is specific on a region or a, a single country, uh, then it's better to post in your native language because this will be uh, more um, that will allow um, a, a better engagement from your audience. And uh, so. Yes, so I would say just to sum up, uh, if you've got an international audience, English, otherwise uh, your own language. Uh, let's see. So uh, then we, we got another question from uh, Immaculada, from uh, Imma from Spain. Um, Imma is asking, can I use my private profiles for the post about my project, uh, about my work? Thank you. Uh, usually what we recommend is to create is to distinguish your private profile from your working profile so uh, email I would really I suggest you to uh, create a, a working profile where where you can only solely focus on posting uh, about your work so about your uh, your project your work your organization and uh, and then keep it separate from your uh, from your personal profile Obviously, the choice is up to you, but we noticed that this is the most effective way to make sure that uh, your uh, your content and is uh, only is is focused on the right uh, on the right topics. Uh, so, and also the type of uh, the the networks that you develop as a result is uh, is is more focused. So, uh, yeah, I would recommend you to create a work one. Uh, okay, so we got. Uh, let's see let's look at the time we got time for a very last question um, and let's see so uh, Romeo from Romania is asking what are the benefits of using hashtags in my posts uh, well Romeo um, the using the relevant hashtags are uh, the best way for you to make sure that your content is seen by a, a, a much larger audience so hashtags are uh, the um the, the the keys to uh, amplify the reach of your content and i'm not just talking about the uh, skills with campaign hashtags but also the uh, using relevant hashtags uh, for your content so this help uh, the social media platform to categorize it uh, and to label it categorize it and to make sure that appears in relevant conversation uh, in obviously twitter in twitter you can see it uh, straight away when you look for uh, an hashtag uh, but of, uh, they're also very important in um, other platforms such as uh, Instagram so Kinam, there are many benefits using hashtag but the number one is the ability to act as a megaphone for your content uh, and this is one of the reason why uh, I've been <laughs> I've been repeating a little bit uh, several times the uh, official hashtags for the campaign the campaign we really really um, like to stress it out uh, and for you guys that how important these are for you and uh, and the uh, uh, the the um, reach of your of your content so having said that we we have arrived to the end of this webinar I would like to thank you uh, all for joining us today um, and uh, for those who haven't done so uh, already, uh, um, head on the uh, European Vocational Skills Week website, register your own event or activity. As I say, it doesn't matter the size of the budget of your event. Uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase your work and inspire others. 
if you already done so um, and if you have a, a, success, a success story uh, you would like to share uh, we really encourage you to do so as well in the um, uh, share your story section of the website we got another webinar in the series coming up very soon which is titled uh, drumming up media interest in your event and uh, as part of the uh, european vocational skills week uh, this will be uh, focused more on uh, media relations and this will be uh, will take place on the 17th of september at 12 uh, uh, at 12 noon um, and um, if in case you have any further questions remember to contact us we're, all, we're always happy to help with any queries you may have so any other questions or doubts you, you, you may have uh, feel free to contact us uh, at one of the um, uh, addresses contact uh, addresses below uh, you will uh, after this webinar you will receive a uh, um, uh, feedback an automated email asking for your feedback so uh, um, we really well welcome your, your your thoughts guys your feedback in order to improve and also uh, you will receive a, a copy of the recording of the a link to the copy um, of the webinar recording as well as the end, uh, handouts with uh, the slides and all the relevant links for example to the ready to share uh, the ready to share uh, content content as well as the uh, sample post that you can use straight away so you're going to have all of these uh, uh, all of these uh, uh, and together with the slides well having said that i really thank you again for joining us today and i wish you uh, a great day